Man, this is tedious. Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Soap the Great, and I am playing on the Too Crafty Vanilla Amplified server. How's everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. So you can see kind of what we are working on today. We're back over here in the Ocean Monument. Well, there is no more Ocean Monument. I've gotten everything cleaned up. You can see that here. And I'm starting to work on the spawning area. So we're going to go with that first. That's what I decided. I'd initially thought I was going to do the collection area first with you. But uh, yeah, I, I need to get this done and at least do a proof of concept and make sure that the spawning area is producing. So, so yeah, let me pick that up. And first things first, you need a massive floor of fence gates. And you can only place fence gates on a solid block. So we're going to be filling this whole area in. So I'm going to bring you along for that. Um, we're not going to get the whole spawning floor done today. Instead, we're just going to chat a little bit and uh, we'll probably get the... I'll, I'll make sure we'll have the, um, the fence gates in as well. Okay, so... Let's see, we are still in the process of getting ready for moving. Okay, so, I mean, you've, you've probably heard the back and forth. I've been trying to, trying to make sure that you're getting videos in a standard progression as to what's going on IRL. So, uh, the painting is done, and probably by the time this goes out, we will have listed the house on the market. So we're working with a realtor and she is going to get this thing listed after we get some more cleanup done. I've still got some outdoor work to do. So we've got to move some mulch and, um, and do some cleanup on the siding. On, I'm not sure if you know about this, but if you look at trees, like if you're ever lost in the woods, here's a little tip for you. Moss grows on the I believe it's the north side of the tree let me let me just verify that real quick but on on the side of our house it's the north side of the house um, moss is growing what no 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 it's not the it's not the north side how's that work moss grows on what side of the tree yeah well, it doesn't only. It grows mostly on the north side. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's only in the, the, the northern hemisphere. So if you're in South America, yeah, you want to look for it on the south side of trees. But, uh, yeah, and it's not just trees. It is any structure that shields the sun, and that includes houses. And so we have a lot of moss and mildew growing on Let's just think about it. It's the northeast side. It's the house is facing kind of away from the sun. So it's the northeast side. Tons of moss and mildew. The southwest side, nothing. Stays clean. So I've been having to deal with that. Pressure washer is not, not that effective, surprisingly. What, what's been really good is a diluted solution of bleach to, to get that off. And these are homeowner concerns. If you're a child and you don't have a house, well, maybe that's something that you could keep in mind to help out your parents if they need to clean up the house. Maybe you see about helping them out. If you see that you've got moss and mildew growing on your, your house, hey, offer to help. I'm sure they'd be glad for it. But uh, yeah, if you're a homeowner and you're getting your house ready for something like that, just little things that we're having to deal with. Uh, let's see, also cleaned out the gutters. Hadn't done that in oh, a couple of years. Had stuff growing in it, little trees starting to pop up. So we had to take care of that too. So well, that's all done. Um, painting is mostly done. We're still, they're, they're gonna be coming back later to do the deck because the weather right now is not the greatest where I am. It's been pretty rainy, and uh, yeah, so 
I think I've mentioned also that we did not do a garden this year. And the reason is we need to get ready for the move. And I didn't want to spend my mental energy on prepping the garden. I also, well, uh, just the way I garden. Okay, so for, for the longest time, I would usually just purchase plants at the store and after the last harvest day in my area, it happens to be tax day, April 15th, um, I would just put them in the ground. And then uh, a co-worker of mine actually also played on the uh, server I shared with co-workers, partially mocked. He, he brought me some seeds for uh, a type of tomato called the Nebraska Wedding. And the Nebraska Wedding has a legend associated with it that brides, new brides in Nebraska, will receive a one of these tomatoes on their wedding day. And the reason is that you pull the seeds out, or you, you get the tomato ready for seeds. You don't eat the tomato, you pull the seeds out. And then you store those seeds for the next growing season, and that's how you start your garden. And now I don't know the validity of that that legend, but it certainly sounds pretty interesting. And so that, that first tomato that he brought me, I did not eat the tomato. I pulled the seeds out. And that started my collection for the next year. And I've actually had three, three growing seasons from that. And uh, one of the things I'm a little bit worried about now is um, if you are not a gardener, it's a little bit of knowledge for you. If you are thinking about doing it and starting from seed and maybe saving your own seed from year to year. It's something that I will I will do for a couple of couple of types of fruits and vegetables, but uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. But seed gets progressively less viable the longer you store it. Okay, that means that yeah, maybe from one year to the next, like after the first year after you get the seed, uh, maybe about 80% of the seed will, d depending on how you store it and how you uh, how you select the seed when you're getting ready to store it, um, you may end up with about an 80 to 90% germination rate. So out of 10 seeds that you put in the ground, maybe eight or nine will come up as plants. Okay, and that that's pretty good for a first year um, without really being a professional seed saver 80 to 90 percent is all right uh, the next year if if you don't plant those seeds the next year it drops to about 50 percent so that means you have to put to get the same same number of plants you have to put pretty much double the seeds out so something to keep in mind and this year i'm skipping so next year um next year i'm going to have to put out a bunch of seeds and the way I do that is you, you actually start in February to get your seedlings ready for April yeah so there's a lot of effort so it's it's kind of like in in here if you're doing a, a big build you do a lot of planning right or you should some people can do the off-the-cuff thing with no problem they just they just work on it but something like this where you have to get the timings just right and the the levels just right like guardians spawn at level 60 down to level 39 so you need your farm to stick in between there and you got to keep in mind your collection area so there's a lot of planting there same thing with gardening lots of planning and, and and a lot of effort ahead of time to make sure that your garden has a pretty good start so if you're looking to to get the most out of your growing season you need to start your seedlings inside in February um, at least for a last frost date like we have in our in our um, so-called agricultural zone and uh, I don't know what the zone is where you live it differs but you can look that up maybe I'll put a link in the description to the USDA agricultural zones but that's what it's based on and there's uh, there's last frost date zone right oh, let's see uh, who else is on Elijah and doom um, so the last frost date is going to vary, and sometimes it's not really based on your agricultural zone. It's also based upon your overall climate. Uh, the, the agricultural zone tries to take that into account, but sometimes it doesn't quite, 
quite get geographic differences. So, um, so you'll have to check something like a farmer's almanac for your area. Those are usually pretty good. And it's based on the average is over a hundred or, or longer, a hundred years or more of, of the last frost. And so they just, it, farmers have been paying attention to it for a long time because they obviously need to know. So that's, uh, that's, you know, maybe I'll leave a, a, a link down there for, so you can find your last frost date. But, but for us here in central North Carolina, it is about April 15th. Where we're moving to, it moves up to about a week later. So I'll have to keep that in mind. But, uh, but yeah, to get the most out of your growing season, you need to start back in February. So you start the, start the seedlings in little pots and, um, and then slowly increase the amount of space they have available to grow. And by April 15th, you should have pretty good seedlings. You put those in the ground and you're going to have a, a nice growing season. Here in, in central North Carolina, it goes from uh, last frost date of April 15th to the first frost date of about October it's early October, like October 12th, October 15th, somewhere in there. So you get, what is that, six months? Yeah, six months. If you do it right, you're, you're going to have a lot of tomatoes. And um, I, I like tomatoes. That's one of the things that we, we use a lot. Uh, there was one year I put out 32 plants, something like that. 32 tomato plants. Um, that was a bit much. We had a lot to... Uh, a lot of tomatoes out of that, which was good. We, I, I also learned canning that year. That was the first year I did seeds. I did tomatoes from seed. And it was the first year that I did canning. I kind of had to because we got over 250 pounds of tomatoes over the course of that growing season. I was going out every morning and picking tomatoes. It was kind of cool, um, but I don't think I'll put out 32 plants ever again. But you never know. We'll see once we get to the new place and see how well that is for, for gardening. Um, okay, so let's just give an update here on the spawning platform. This is not going to be the actual spawning platform. This is just, just so I can put out fence gates. Oh my goodness. I'm going to run out of dirt, I bet. I'll have to go back to my base and grab some dirt. Yep. Um... Yeah, so this is going to be 58 by 58, and I'm going to have a little area in the middle. You'll see once we get to the fence gate portion, but that might have to be for next episode. I thought I'd get to it today, but we've uh, we've been chatting for a while, and uh, I'm sorry, we've just been been doing this. Maybe uh, no, I think next episode we'll we'll get to that, the fence gates, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll do some jump cuts on that one just to progress the the build a little bit but hopefully you have enjoyed this discussion have you done a garden do you do you like gardening i kind of miss it this year although it uh, it you know it means that i've got more time and mental energy to dedicate to the various things that need to be done oh here he's going too okay well doom is over in the uk and so his, he's on a standard schedule. Airy works really late. And so his, um, so it's, it's kind of like his evening right now. And he's getting ready to go to bed, I bet. But, uh, but yeah, so, so do you do a garden? Have you done one before? Uh, what's your favorite vegetable or fruit, as the case may be? Um, tomatoes are considered to be a vegetable by Congress, but they're actually a fruit scientifically. Um, so you can look that up if you want to know the difference. I don't quite understand the difference. Uh, I know fruits contain seeds. I don't. I, that's a very simplistic notion. So, but uh, tomatoes fall in that category because they contain the seed of the plant. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to go get some more dirt. Let's see. So tomatoes. I've done those, and those are probably my favorite. Okra is also a favorite. Uh, we found an heirloom variety that is purple, which is pretty cool. I've been saving seed from that as well. 
And then, um, let's see, I've tried purple cherry tomatoes. And what else? What else have we done? I've done potatoes. They, they just didn't work so well, so we, we've just decided to not worry about those. We'll, we'll buy those at the store, try and get ones that haven't been doused in pesticides for for any length of time but there's only so much you can do um, let's see what else have we done corn I've tried that one year got some Peruvian purple corn uh, maiz morado and it is very it's a Peruvian it's um, of course it's Peruvian it's called purple Peruvian corn but they use it in Peru it's in the Andes and um, they use it for this wonderful, wonderful beverage called chicha morada. And don't let the chicha on the front fool you. It is not a an alcoholic beverage. It is a boiled beverage. So you boil the the purple corn along with some pineapple and apples and a um, little bit of sugar. And some cinnamon and cloves and man, it's just it's just really good. There's a restaurant close by, or well, not it's relatively close. Um, that it's a Peruvian restaurant and they sell chicha morada, morada. Sorry, for those of you that speak Spanish, um, but it is uh, it's it's pretty good, quite tasty. Yeah. Um, so we tried that. It was a bumper year for rain. And the soil was really good, and it had high nitrogen content, so the plants grew really tall, but they didn't produce any fruit because there was too much rain. So, yeah, that means that um, we got, oh, the plants got like 14 feet tall, and they were too heavy, and they fell over, and I had, had a time of it just trying to keep them up, and I decided, you know what? This corn is not worth it. We will buy that as well. Do we have any more dirt over here? No more dirt. Leaves. Could do leaves. Those are a bit of a pain to, to dig back out. Yep. Let me just show you some of the materials here. We're getting that ready. And that. And that. And that. Yep. Yep. See that? We're going to use most of that. Yeah, we need almost a double chest full of... of stuff to cover that. We are going to have a little bit of a gap between two sides, so it's not quite going to be 58 by 58. It'll be more like 28 by 58 times 2. Okay, does that make sense? You'll see once we get the fence case, but I'm going to call it here. Hopefully you have enjoyed this episode. I know we're not getting tons of progress done each episode, but again, this is just to make sure that we have videos going out every week during the heat of the move. Right now, since we're getting the house ready, um, the family is, is uh, we're, we're not around as much, um, so I am at home by myself while the, we're taking care of a lot of these things. The, the, my wife and kids are over at, the, at my in-laws getting, getting ready. Oh, something, something's up there. We gotta fix that. What's going on here? Okay, so we're actually out of hmm there's nothing in there let's see if this no that's not gonna be it let's get a little bit of this and see if we can reset and it should should reset yeah so I'm gonna get some more dirt I'm gonna go finish that off camera and you'll probably see in the thumbnail that it is finished but, uh, but yeah, there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated. And do bear with me. We will be through this very soon. So the house... Well, you can pay attention on Twitter. Check that out. Uh, I'll, I'll probably have news there as to what's going on. But, uh, but yeah, so we're still going through the move. And uh, yeah, thank you for your patience. And thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.